welcome to Insight Magazine. Well, military reserve service punctuates the lives of many Israelis, primarily men up to the age of 40. Well, every year when duty calls, they leave everything, sometimes with very little notice. Well, from street vendors to bank executives, these citizens don their uniforms well beyond their regular army service and define the Israeli Defense Force as an army of the people. Well, a call-up always involves intensive training and sometimes high-risk combat missions. With a look at what takes place in the lives of those who serve, it's not just those in uniform that make the sacrifice, but their families as well. Well, here's IDF Reservist Citizen Soldiers by T.B. Karlik for I-24 News. Every year, Israel calls up its citizens for military reserve duty. Service in the reserves is mandatory for many in Israel and is considered part of the national ethos. Every year, those in the reserves need to leave work, family and friends and go serve the country for up to 30 days and even more in emergency situations. This is the reality for many of Israel's citizens. Zenia, what can I make for you? Make something quick. It's already 7.40. Evgeny is a sales manager at Aeroflex, 33 years old, married and expecting his first child. He goes to the reserves once a year for less than 30 days. Evgeny is called a jobnik, meaning he is a non-combat soldier, serving in relatively quiet and safe areas compared to those in combat units. Couldn't you have put off your reserve duty? Listen, all my buddies are going in. But I'm back from the hospital. Buddy just had an operation. We just moved in. Can your dad take your car in for testing? Did you speak to Andre? We agreed that we'd take the car to him, but it has to be tested. When am I supposed to bring him the car? By the weekend. My husband, me, my car, what else? <laughs> Plus the things from home. But honey, this is real life, isn't it? We have to deal with it. Just as you're going to the reserves, <laughs> why don't you stay? No, honey, let's do it and get it over with. So. Hello? Saha? Yes. Hi, it's Avia from Hatikva Building. How are you? Fine. When's the earliest we can meet? Avia, an entrepreneur in real estate, is 39 years old with a busy schedule. Avia is a commanding officer in his unit, a very important position in the army. No, no, no. I'm in the army. I can't be able to he made the choice to commit to his service above and beyond what is asked of him. Avi also takes part in risky and dangerous combat missions. Anati. Anati, I'm leaving the neighborhood. When do I have to pick him up? Can you get there by four? I think so. Not I think so. Can you or can't you? You see who's the commander here? You're leaving now? I'm leaving now. I'm turning on ways. And if I see I won't make it, I'll let you know. Okay, bye. You see who's the boss? No maybes. Tell me yes or no. Oh no. <laughs> Bye. They're my friends. He's filming me. He's filming you? Good morning. How are you? Good. What's new? People. Today we're going to take care of all our customers who couldn't afford an adjustable Aeroflex bed. We're going to take care of them today. When I'm in the reserves, there's no one to lead all the sections subordinate to me. And when I come back, there's a lot of pressure. When I get back from the reserves, I work from morning till night in order to fulfill all my obligations.
Iya lah, Bang. Okay, honey, be a big girl. Bye, take care of yourself. Hello, Mr. Company Commander. How are you? I'm fine. How was it? Okay? What's up? Good morning. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. Most importantly, we're all friends. We're like one big family. Here's the commander. Sign here. You have to be there by 10.30. Good luck, Vitali. Which lookouts? Battalion 20 is unable to carry out its mission to capture the refugee camp and the Kaspa at the same time. It's stuck in the Kaspa now. Our mission is to capture El Mahabarun, El Sajaiya, and the refugee camp. Is that clear so far? Good. When you get there, report to me. Get going. Go, 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 go! It's money time, okay? Everything we've learned so far is now being applied in the field with the hundreds of soldiers here today. In the end, it's the adrenaline that drives you. Let's talk about Operation Pillar of Defense. At 12 midnight, we were called up for reserve duty. We had to work under missile fire, under the Qasem rocket fire. With the siren sounding, we enlisted at Mishmar HaNegev, and there were sirens every few seconds. And your family is under fire at home. We're running to get up on the army vehicles, and we all get a phone call. A siren sounds. You're running to the army vehicle, and you're thinking, where's the rocket heading? To our base, or to Beersheva, where most of the men are from? Their families are there. Let's go. You see the vehicles on the left? We're used to this, it's nothing new. I'm used to going away for days and weeks, but it's still hard because I have little kids at home. Still, it's a big challenge, but we know why we're here, and that makes up for the difficulty somehow. The phrase brothers in arms, if you've never done it, if you don't know what it's like to carry a buddy, sleep next to him, eat with him, crawl with him, and as most of us have done, fight shoulder to shoulder. That means if I charge, he covers me, and if he charges, I cover him. And if you have to carry casualties under fire, which I've done, you do that too. That's brotherhood, friendship which is an amazing thing, and it's hard to even explain. It isn't easy. I'm sure that all the wives whose husbands do reserve duty and have a child or two understand each other. But it's part of his obligation, and I know that thanks to the reserve soldiers, our army is safe and our country is safe. And so you live with it. You're used to it. There's a little excitement, right? Right. Luli. 
Tell me, when I go to reserves, do you miss me? Yes. And what do you do? I take this and kiss it. Let's see. <laughs> and what happens to daddy when you kiss him? It tickles. Even if I'm in the army? Yes. <laughs> and do you sleep with the photo? Yes. My kids are used to me going to the reserves, which is nice, but it's sad too. Once Ella asked me, Daddy, you're not going to the reserves today, right? In the middle of the week, out of nowhere. Should I eat you up? Whenever Daddy doesn't come home, we miss each other, even if it's only for a day or two. And when it's for a longer period, there are phone calls and tears and so on. Avia is away a lot and he's missed a lot of important events. When I had our third child, when we moved to a new apartment, he couldn't do it without my help. When I'm in the army, I know what I'm doing and I like it. And even when it's hard, it's all right because I'm dealing with myself. But it bothers a knot, and crises do happen. When you leave, you never say, wow, look what I'm leaving behind. No, I say, wow, but I do, but I... You don't say that, Avia. You don't, because if you really felt that way, first of all, you wouldn't go so often, you'd be more selective when you could, and second of all, you wouldn't leave your wife who just gave birth. I'm not sure you think about how complicated it is. First of all, nobody's forcing me. And besides the fact that what I'm doing is very important, I see it as my mission. It has to be done. It's about values. It isn't just about his need for personal growth. But I don't think it should be glorified. A lot of it is about his personal needs. TP in the studio. TP, thank you for joining us here. Hello, David. Good evening. So, despite living this reality to some degree yourself, uh, being an Israeli, what was new to you? What did you learn while making this film? I was released from the army many, many years ago. For us women who serve in the army, it ends at the age of 20. So for many years, I didn't get to see what it is like. How does a family unit deal with the army? And I discovered an entirely new world. I found out that men go to the army, leave their families behind, their wives and children who miss them. They don't know how to deal with it. They have to deal with the everyday life on their own. That was new to me. And on the other hand, I entered this world of the reserve duty. I found myself with someone on the field, a combat soldier performing drills. It was a new experience for me. I'd never seen it before, and it disconnects him from his natural everyday environment. It takes him to a totally different place. That's one of the things I could witness. It's kind of a cutoff from that person's natural environment. He's in another place that somehow brings him back to his childhood. That's another thing I could witness. Well, certainly a, a parallel universe uh, within Israeli society from the civilian world. Uh, what happens for these people in the reserves during a war or an emergency situation? 
The regular procedure is that they have a few days after being called up. In war situations, they receive an immediate order called the Create. It means that within 72 hours, about 600,000 people, that's a large group of people, stop their lives, leave their families, their children, their regular job, and join the army. They leave everything behind all of a sudden. That's something you should have been prepared for. Usually it takes a few days, but here they don't have too much time. On a very short notice, they have to leave everything behind and go. Well, CP, thank you very much for bringing us this incredible story here today. Thank you, David. And thank you for joining us here at Inside Magazine. We'll see you next week at the same time.